Hi, I'm teacher Thomas. Welcome to A-Level Maths. This is 9231 Further Probability and Statistics, Topic 4, Non-Parametric Tests. We're looking at the Wilcox and Rank Sum Test. To begin, we'll identify the assumptions required to use this test. First, we're working with independent groups. So this is not a paired kind of test. There is a Wilcox and Match pairs signed rank test. That's when you have the same group being measured in a before and after scenario, or a scenario A and scenario B scenario. Here we have two independent groups. Secondly, symmetric data. And finally, continuous data. And one comment I want to make regarding the scenarios in which we can use this test. Groups may or may not be same size. I've posted the test algorithm that we'll work through in our example. We're going to be evaluating the question. Does vitamin B12 affect brain size? I'll bring over the data. Here are my data on the next slide. We'll use this slide to do the required calculations. Notice the group sizes aren't the same. There are some people that have low vitamin B12. The number there is 9. And the people with high B12, the number there is 7. So here's an example of two group sizes that are not the same. Let's go back and start with our hypotheses. The null and the alternative. Null B12 does not affect brain size. And the alternative B12 does affect brain size. Now we'll work steps two and three of the algorithm. Rank and identify groups. First I'll rank and I'm going to go from small to large so the smallest measurement will be rank one. If you go from large to small, the way the test statistic works, in the end, we're going to end up with the same test statistic. Looking down the column, I can see my smallest measurement is the first high B12, 0 0.786. I'm going to give that a 1. Next is right below that, 7.89. That will be 2. 7.92. That's 3. Up at the top in the low B12, 7.95 is next, 4. And down again at the bottom, 7.96, 5. And I'll go through the process and complete the ranking for all 16 measurements. And here are the rankings. Now I want to go to step 3, identify groups. So I have low and in the format I have the data, they're already grouped. So these first nine will go into the low group, and then the bottom seven will go into the high group. So let's go back and see what our next step is. It is step four, calculate test statistic. And I can get the details from the top of the Wilcoxon rank sum test table in the MF19. M is less than or equal to n, and our test statistic w is the minimum of r sub m. This is the sum of the rankings in whichever group we identify as m, or m times m plus n plus 1 minus r sub m. Let's identify which group is M and which group is N. M is less than or equal to N, so the number of measurements in group high is fewer than the number of measurements in group low, 
So we will label those groups as M and N based on the smaller number of measurements being in group H. For the test statistic, I'll need the sum of the M column. That's our high group. We add the rankings in high, we get 36. And now looking up at the test statistic, the calculation of W is going to be the minimum of the sum of the smaller group. We have that as 36 or the other value. The M and the N are the number, so I'll post up where I've labeled the L and the H as N and M. L, N here equals 9, the sample size, and M is 7, the sample size. So now continuing with the test statistic, the second measurement we're evaluating is M times 7 times m plus n plus 1, 7 plus 9 plus 1, minus r sub m, that's our 36. This leads to choosing between the minimum of 36 and 83, which results in a test statistic w of 36. Step 5, look up the critical value. Here's a snapshot from the table that we're using. We need to evaluate three measurements, our M, our N, and our significance level, and a fourth factor, whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. So let's go back to scenario. I don't have my significance level written in. I'll give that to you. That's 5%. And we're evaluating this question using a 5% significance level. And there's no indication whether the alternative is greater than or less than. It's simply not the same. That means two-tail. Effect, we're going to consider that to be not equal to. So in the table, we're looking at a two-tailed test. Significance level is 5%. Our N we've identified up at the top as 9, and our M we've identified as 7. So this entire section relates to M equals 7. Match the row of 9 and the column of 2 tail 0 0.5 in the M equals 7 grid. I see that my critical value is 40. Let's look at our final step and our evaluation. Step six, if W is greater than the critical value, you do not reject the null. If it is less than, you do reject the null. I'll set up my W as, or simply bring down my W as 36, and bring down my critical value as 40. Comparing, I see that 36 is less than 40. Based on the algorithm, I will reject the null hypothesis. So if I go back and look at what I wrote as my alternative hypothesis, that's the description of my decision. B12 does affect brain size. Now conceptually what the analysis has done is that the table has given us a threshold below which we're not comfortable with a probability. So 36 and 40, those aren't probabilities, but they're based on probabilities and the probability that 36 represents is too small. It's too unlikely that the null hypothesis is correct. So while we're not seeing probabilities in these numbers, the idea behind the calculations and behind the critical value table is a comparison of probabilities. When our test statistic is smaller than the critical value, that means that the probability that the null hypothesis is correct is too low based on our criteria. And this completes the lesson on Wilcoxon rank sum test.